Thanks to Shortform for sponsoring this video. I've been using this Samsung Galaxy foldable phone for a while and uh, I'm very happy I bought it. It's a huge screen, which is almost as big as the iPad mini is awesome. Watching videos and uh, movies, for instance, has been so enjoyable. I know the next Fold 4 is coming out soon and I'm kind of tempted to get it. But in the meantime, I thought of introducing what I have on my phone. Let's now have a look at what I have in here. I don't really do much customization like some people do uh, since I have been using iPhone. This customizability of Android phones is kind of overwhelming. Anyway, the first app is a time tree. This is my favorite calendar sharing app. It's not known by many people, but I think it's one of the best tools to share your schedule with your friends and uh, family. For me, I have a shared calendar with my girlfriend, so it's easier to see what each other's schedule looks like and uh, find the best time to hang out. What's awesome about this app is that you can even leave comments on each event, share memory and uh, to-do list. And the best part is that it's free, which means it feels easy to invite other people. If it's a paid app, many people would hesitate to use it, but since it's free, it's easy to convince them to use it with you. The second one on my list is DuckDuckGo. This is my go-to web browser on my phone. I started using it recently because they just launched a bunch of cool privacy features like uh, privacy protected email and app tracking protection. This tracking protection thing is cool. I mean, I'm not a security expert, but it's interesting to see how much various apps attempt to track you in a day. I've been using it for only about a week, but you can see there were like nearly a thousand attempted tracking occurred and DuckDuckGo was able to block them. I don't really care so much about privacy stuff to be honest, but I guess it's nice to be more protected. Browsing on this thing is good too. It feels a little bit slower than Chrome, Brave or Vivaldi, but still it's not a big difference. Uh, I like how easy it is to close all the tabs and uh, clear data with just one tab with this fire animation. And by the way, privacy protected email feature is pretty useful too. It gives you a new duck email address and uh, then lets you create new random email addresses that you can use when signing up to websites and apps. This way you can hide your real email address so nobody can use it for bad things. All right, the next one is 1Password. This is related to privacy. It's one of the most useful apps I have on my phone and it's an absolute necessary one for me. I used to use the same password for every app and website I signed up to, which I realized was such a terrible idea. But it's always cumbersome to come up with new passwords and uh, memorize them. That's where 1Password comes in handy. Now I use it to generate random strong password and uh, manage all of them in one place here. It's seriously improved my security, I think, and it helps me sleep better at night knowing I'm now more protected. Okay, now another one I want to mention along with 1Password is Fastmail. This is the email app I use because it works very well with 1Password. In fact, it has a great integration with it. Now, just like DuckDuckGo, Fastmail lets you generate random email addresses you can use. This way you can hide your true email address. And even if someone starts to send you a spam email or annoying promotion, you can just simply disable that fake email address. So you may be thinking, with DuckDuckGo now having the same masked email feature, you don't have to use Fastmail. And that is true. I don't know if I still need to keep using Fastmail, but I think I'm just going to stick to it since it's super cheap, uh, only a few dollars a month. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is Evolve. I discovered it recently. It's an interesting news app that uses GPT-3 AI to summarize news into small bits that's easier to digest. They call it TikTok for news. I'm still testing it to see if I like it, but it's all right. It's definitely made it a little faster to know what's going on in the world in a short period of time. If you want to try it, it's free. Another news app I use is Refined. I've been using it for years now. This also uses an algorithm to pick a handful of articles that it thinks you like. So this way you don't have to get bombarded by hundreds of uninteresting news and uh, articles. Shortform is my favorite book guide app. It covers books as well as articles across different genres. And what I like about it is that its summary is much more detailed compared to other book summary apps. It does not only summarize key ideas of a book, but also gives you an analysis of the ideas where you can 
learn how different ideas are connected. This smart analysis was a huge reason why I became a fan of short form. Also, they're adding new book guides every week so you can learn new ideas regularly. If you want to try short form, go to shortform.com slash Xiaomi so you can get an unlimited access for five days and discounted annual subscription. This will support this channel too, so I'd really appreciate your help. All right, since this is a affordable phone with this huge screen, I do enjoy drawing on it. For that, I use this app called Concept. It's one of the best drawing apps on the market. It has this infinite canvas where you can write and draw anywhere you like. Sometimes I need to draw a rough sketch for YouTube thumbnails. This helps me get some idea on how I'd like to make it. Snipped is my favorite podcast app. I love listening to podcasts whenever I'm bored or taking a walk. And among many podcast apps, this is the best one. I talked about it in my previous video, so I won't go into detail, but it comes with super useful features and a beautiful user interface. And also it's free, so you might want to give it a try if you're interested. I have a folder for social network sites like uh, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I use TweetDeck sometimes to see Twitter, which is quite useful to see different lists at the same time. And Typefly is where I save tweet drafts and uh, make Twitter threads. I also kind of love Pinterest. It's actually actually a great place to find inspirations and uh, curate your favorite things. For me, I use it to find cool ideas for room layout as well as like outfits. And the last one in this folder is Be Real. It's that new social media that everybody has been talking about and you might have seen it on the news or Twitter, but basically everyone gets a notification every day at a random time and you have only about two minutes window to take a photo of what you're doing at that moment and post it. So the idea is that you have no time to edit photos, filter, or find a perfect angle for your face. Instead, you have to show more of a real life of yours, hence the name. It's an interesting idea, but I haven't used it yet because I'm too lazy and uh, I don't think I will, to be honest, unless more friends start to use it. Right now, I can only see a few of my friends on the platform, so it's not that fun. Okay, the next one is White. It's a famous money transfer app. I use it to make invoices and uh, receive send money abroad. I used to use PayPal, but White is cheaper and as fast. In terms of shopping, I use Amazon and uh, Shein is also good because it's super cheap. For instance, I love fake plant. I have a bunch of them in my room, but in Shein, they only cost a few dollars, whereas it would cost like more than $10 on Amazon or Ikea. And of course, their clothes are cheap too although I've never gotten any clothes from them yet. Mercari is a great app, kind of like eBay, where you can sell your stuff and uh, buy secondhand things. If you're following my channel, you know Raindrop. It's my favorite app to store my favorite things. Uh, it can be articles, website, videos, and uh, images, and so on. It's my personal library, so I don't forget things. You can save anything to Raindrop easily with just a few clicks, and it's very cheap too. My to-do and the schedule app is Ampunoid. I have many videos about it because I like it a lot. I use it to write things down so I don't have to forget them and keep track of them. It can be like my favorite food, movies to watch, favorite quotes, as well as things I have to do. I can see them as a list and the tasks can be scheduled in my calendar, which is useful to do time blocking. All right, now Anki is what I use sometimes to memorize important stuff. Like for example, when I get a new phone number, I make a card on Anki so I can memorize them. Or whenever I come across words and the phrases I don't know yet, I jot it down in Anki. If you want to remember something important, writing down in a note app isn't enough. So using flashcard apps like Anki is a much better way. Speaking of studying, I like Link for learning languages. I've been studying Spanish since my girlfriend's from Mexico. I like it because it has lots of stories and uh, you can see which words you know already and uh, don't know yet. So far, it's going okay and uh, I'm going to Mexico this December to meet her parents, so wish me luck. All right, Stoic is my journaling slash meditation app. It has many journaling prompts, so it's easier to start writing as well as like breathing and the meditation exercises. So every night before going to bed, I do journaling where I just write down whatever in mind. This is hands down the best hack to fall asleep faster and deeper in my experience. It helps to get rid of that bothering thought out of your head. Finally, I've been trying to walk more recently because I spend so much time sitting in front of a computer. So I just got Dragon Quest Walk app. 
uh, it's kind of like Pokemon Go, but instead of Pokemon, it's Dragon Quest. So basically, you set your goal destination and walk to it so you can get some points. I'm not quite sure if I like it, but I guess it makes walking more fun. All right, if you want to see my favorite productivity apps I use every day, make sure to check this video. Okay, thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.